Number 14, assuming that no equilibria other than dissolution are involved, calculate the molar solubility of each of the following from its solubility product, and then we have the ionic compound PbBr2. So we have to find the molar solubility of lead to bromide from its solubility product. And remember, the solubility product is just a KSP, right? SP, solubility product. So I went in the back of the textbook to find out what the KSP value is for PBBR2, because without it, we can't do this problem. But what is a KSP value without its balanced equation? It's nothing. So we first have to write the balanced equation for lead to bromide. So let's go for it. PBBR2. Now, since we're talking about KSPs, that means that whatever compound we're starting with, that's going to dissolve dissolution breakdown into its ions in water. So that means that this had to have started as an actual solid, and then it dissolved into its ions, aqueous, right? So this has to be a solid. And then we have double arrow because we're dealing with K values, equilibrium. And then I have my two ions, right? PB and BR. So I'll start with that. So PB plus BR, we need charges in the upper right-hand corner because they're ions now, but we can use um, the uh, coefficients, uh, not the coefficients, the subscripts to help us out. This is like going all the way back to basics. This one crisscrosses up, telling me that the bromine is a negative one charge, and then this two crisscrosses up, telling me that the PB was a plus two charge. And now since we have the charges, that means that they're aqueous. And then just make sure that you balance. I have one lead, one lead, but I have two bromines. So I have to come over here and say that I have two BR minuses. And now the balanced equation is done. So I'm just going to put it over here for now. But I'm going to use it to write out the general KSP equation for this uh, balanced equation. Remember, the KSP formula is this one right here. It's just the concentration of products raised to the coefficients. No reactants allowed because no solids are allowed in any K expression. Doesn't change the equilibrium. So I have KSP equals, we have concentration of PB2 plus times the concentration of the BR minus but just make sure that you're raising it to the coefficients, the big numbers in the front of the balanced equation. Well, there was no number here, right? That means that there was one lead. So I could raise this to the first, but that's going to be the same number. But since there's a two in front of the bromine, I have to put a two in front of there or raise the bromine to the second power. Now the KSP was 4.6 times 10 to the negative sixth. But the thing is, is I don't know what these concentrations are. They didn't say. So we have to label it as a variable. So I'm going to come back over here, and I'm just going to say, okay, I don't know how much PB plus 2 I have, so I'm going to label it as a variable. Let's pick X. But the idea here is that it has to match with the coefficient. So if I bring this one down, 1 times X is just X, right? So for BR minus, if this is a 1 to 2, relationship, whatever I have here, I have to have two times as much. So this would be 2x. And that kind of makes sense because the two has to be brought down. So these are the numbers that I'm going to use in for my uh, molarities for the KSP expression. So 4.6, and actually, I'll just label that. So this would be x, and this would be 2x. Okay. Now let's go and do it. 4.6 times 10 to the negative 6 equals, I have my two things here. We got an x value, and then we have a 2x squared. So let's conquer 2x squared. Anything squared just means that you have two of these being multiplied by each other. So it's basically 2x times 2x. Multiply the numbers first. 2 times 2 is 4 and then pick up how many x's you have. You literally have two x's, so that's an x squared. So I can just simplify that 2x squared is the same as 4x squared. And now pick up another x value. You only had one of these. You're adding it 
Well, when you're multiplying x values, you just add the exponents. You, you think of like picking them up. So I have 1x going with the 2x's, so I have a total of the 3x's here. So 4.6 times 10 to the negative 6 equals 4x cubed. Now we're just going back to algebra. I'm going to get x by itself. I'm going to divide by 4. And that will cancel this out. So 4.6 4. times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 4. I get 1.15 times 10 to the negative 6th. And that equals x cubed. So the inverse of cubing is do the cubed root. So you could do that on your calculator on both sides. Uh, I like to use the fraction method because it's easier for me to see. Just know that if you want to get rid of any exponent, all you have to do is just raise it to the inverse value. So this would be 3 over 1. So I raise it to the 1 third. And I do that on both sides. So I raise it to the 1 third. Now that cancels. And now we have just x equals. So this value raised to the 1 third is uh, 2 sig figs. So maybe I'll just say 0 .0 0 0.010 binary code. <laughs> and that's molarity. But now, just to put things into perspective, if we're calculating the molar solubility, they want to know what the molarity was of the original solid, so the PBI2. Just going back to the balanced equation, just know that for a KSP, you'll always have one solid because that coefficient number will be a 1. So you could treat this as a 1x. It would be the same number. So this would be 0 0.010 molarity of PB, BR, 2. Final answer for all you viewers out there. Thank you so much. And I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Uh, go check the channel out. We also have physics and math videos on the channel. Um, hopefully we can help you there. You know, tell your friends, tell your classmates. The, the channel is almost at 20,000 subscribers and it's all because of you. So thank you so much. All right. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.